What up book lovers? It is G-Swizz here and I'm here today with my March TBR. <laughs> So we've already made it to March 2023. This is not only an exciting milestone because we have made it through two months of 2023. It's also a really exciting milestone for myself and my husband as March 25 of this year will be our third year wedding anniversary. And like not to get all sappy or anything, um, but uh, I never thought in my life I would ever get married. So this still kind of blows my mind. But anyway, <laughs> this video is not about that, but it's very exciting and the final week of this month I will be going on a vacation to Melbourne with him so I personally don't know whether or not I will get any reading done during that week because I think we're just gonna have a lot of fun and I really don't know when I'm gonna have time to read that week I mean maybe I might sneak in an audiobook here or there you know me with my insomniac nights that's how I get my reading done sometimes but in terms of this month's TBR I'm still preparing for the second time I'm going to Melbourne within this year which is happening less than a month after my first trip. I'm planning to fly down to Melbourne for Rare 2023, which is the Romance Authors and Readers event. I'm so looking forward to that. And so I wanna get a few books finished by then so I could make these author signings and I could say with confidence, I loved your book. And I don't yet own books from all the authors that I want to see. However, I am so, so, so looking forward to getting to the ones that I do have. But to top it all off, this TBR also has some other fantasy sci-fi additions to it as well and I'm very much looking forward to reading those as well. February was a full-on romance contemporary month and this month I don't want to do the complete opposite because yes every once in a while I will have to pick up a romance contemporary in order to get me excited to read the next thing and sometimes I just need it as a good palate cleanser but I really want to focus on the books that aren't on my romance contemporary TBR and really give some love to the fantasy section of my bookshelf. So I guess without further ado let's get straight into this TBR. The first book I have to mention that is on my monthly TBR is Broken Bonds by Jay Bree. So technically at Rare 2023, I'm going to be collecting two of Jay Bree's special edition books. They are convention exclusives and I'm excited for that. However, at this point, while I'm filming, I have not yet read a Jay Bree novel. I need to do it. I hear great things about the series. I don't hear great things about the finale, unfortunately, but I hear that at least the first half of the series is amazing or at least the first four books. It is a six book series. I am willing to get my heart broken by the series. However, not gonna lie, for quite some time I have been guarding my heart when it comes to the series because at this point I don't know whether my heart could take another book hangover. I am literally still recovering from the last hours book hangover that I had but I really need to move on from the last hour series and I really do need to pick up more fantasy romance books that are going to keep me engaged and keep me interested in fantasy romance because as much as I've been enjoying my contemporary romance kick, I seriously need to go back to my favorite genre. <laughs> I've been really intimidated to go back to my favorite genre because I just know that it hurts even more if I get attached to the characters because there are higher stakes in fantasy. But anyway, that was a side tangent. I'm very much looking forward to getting to Broken Bonds in particular because I hear that this first book in a series is really good. Moving on from a first book in a series, I'm going to be talking about a second book in a series. And no, it's not the same series. It's a different series. It's a series I started last year and the first book made it to my favorite books of last year. That, my friends, is Queen of Myths and Monsters the second book in the King of Battle and Blood series. I love the first book so much. However, I did not continue on with the sequel as soon as it came out because I received my copy a month after publication. It was so annoying. I don't understand why the publisher did not prepare for Australian hardback pre-orders, but I mean, we love hardbacks here. We just don't get them that often. By the time this book arrived at my doorstep, I was invested in so many other books that I did not pick it up. I want to prioritize it in the month of March because this is a world that is very familiar to me and I just know that I'm going to appreciate it, I'm going to love it, and after prioritizing a bunch of my contemporary romances, this reading experience I see as a potential reward because I reckon I'm going to love it so much. I honestly cannot wait to read another book with Adrian and Eiffel Day, and I'll let you guys know how I go with it once I get to it. And another book I want to read before Rare 2023 is Kingdom of Villains by Ella Fields. Now, this is my fabled exclusive edition. I don't know whether I'm going to take it to get signed or not because it's already got a signed book plate and I I 
was stupid enough to put it in there rather than wait for the author to sign the book itself and to personalize it. But I've pre-ordered four other books by Ella Fields, which in total makes two series by Ella Fields. I'm very much looking forward to getting to those. However, I need to prioritize the books that are on my physical TBR and I want to read Kingdom of Villains. I am getting Beauty and the Beast vibes from this based on the fact that in the synopsis there is like a beast-like creature. I believe that it's like a monster romance and I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of dig it. Even though I haven't read much monster romance in my life so far, I mean Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale so it kind of makes sense. Very much looking forward to getting to Kingdom of Villains and I'm hoping to read it before Rare 2023. And another author that I want to read before Rare 2023 is Lillian T. James. I've also pre-ordered some books by Lillian T. James as well. I decided to cave and purchase the untainted hardbacks from Lillian T. James, the ones that she has just published herself. And a big reason why is because the Bookish Box have not confirmed whether they're going to be doing book two. And that devastates me because this edition of Untainted looks so beautiful. I honestly feel like it's a wasted opportunity if they don't do Untamed. However, I decided I wanted to give my money to the author by purchasing her hardback editions of Untamed. And I also pre-ordered Meet Me Halfway, which is a contemporary novel from her. However, so far, pre-rare, pre-event, this is the only book I have on my physical TBR from Lillian T. James, and so I want to give it a shot. I don't know whether this is going to make me even more sad that the Bookish Box has not confirmed that they are going to do sequels to the series or not, but regardless, it's probably going to make me even more pumped to meet Lillian T. James at the event. So I cannot wait to get to Untamed, and I'm going to see how this goes. And the next book I would like to read in the month of March is Something by May Sage. So I'm saying Something by May Sage, but I'm putting The Cursed Crown here as a placeholder because I might get to the other bind up that I received from the Arcane Society by May Sage first. From what I know, May Sage is not doing any pre-orders prior to the event. You will have to purchase event stock there. And so that makes me a little bit sad because I would have wanted to browse her catalog prior to going to Rare and purchase pre-signed books from her, but that is okay. This kind of motivates me to read my Arcane Society copies anyway and to fully appreciate them and to see whether or not May Sage is the author for me. I really adore the special editions that the Arcane Society gave. Also, from what I've noticed, May Sage's books are pretty short and easy to get through. I mean, I have a bind up of two novels by them, and yes, while it is chunky, it has two novels in it, so it's not necessarily too intimidating. I reckon that May Sage's books on my shelves so far are easy reads, so I cannot wait to get to these ones. Fingers crossed I enjoyed them, and fingers crossed I will consider purchasing more books from her at the event. And the next book that I would love to read in the month of March is Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chepeko. I wanted to read this book for quite some time. I have not gotten to it yet. I was personally waiting for the US hardback to make it to my shelves. I mean, that is kind of a good motivator, right? It is so pretty. I cannot wait to read it. I've also put this on my five star predictions TBR. And additionally, Beck from Beckle Books put this on my 12 friends recommend me 12 books challenge for the year. And I'm really excited about that because this is probably the book that I'm most hyped up for. Putting it on my five star predictions TBR kind of explains it all. I cannot wait to get to this one and I don't want to keep putting it off. I was tempted to read it in January. That didn't end up happening. And February, once again, there was a big focus on romance novels specifically. So I'm hoping that March will be the month I finally get to this book. If not, it will happen sometime this year. I will make sure of it. The next book I plan to read in the month of March is The Red Scholar's Wake. This was my first monthly Illumicrate book I had received and I really love the look of it. I mean, look at that beautiful cover. Look at the beautiful ombre. I am actually very much obsessed with this edition and I'm really happy that I subscribed to Illumicrate at the time that I did. Even though I kind of also wanted the luminaries from them, I did sign up to the waitlist earlier, but unfortunately I did miss November, so I got December instead. So this was the book I received when I first joined, and honestly, I'm very much pleased with this edition. It looks absolutely stunning. I haven't really read many space operas in a while. When I'm not reading Jesse Mihalik, when I think about space operas, I think about James S.A. Corey. I really want to get back into the Expanse world because I loved the Expanse series so much. It is definitely one of my favorite space opera series. I find it really difficult to get into science fiction and space operas these days. And I personally think it's because I've read too many young adult space operas in the past. And sometimes the cheesy romances can get in the way of me actually kind of enjoying the high stakes of a space opera. And I think it's also the 100. And I mean, as much as I did appreciate like the first season of the 100 when I was younger, I also appreciate the fact that people enjoy the Expanse TV series, even though I really did not. I cannot help but interpret space operas with like a poor TV budget. Like for 
some reason, when I'm reading space operas, my brain goes to a poor TV budget interpretation of space, and I don't want it to. I think it's because I've done myself dirty a few times. I can't do that anymore. I want to be able to enjoy space operas with a wider imagination, but the only way I can do that is if I experience more space operas and if I decrease the amount of cringy space TV shows I watch. <laughs> and I mean no offense to the lovers of those TV shows, it's just the budget. The budgeted look of the space opera. Like, we could at least agree on that, right? But anyway, that probably has nothing to do with this book in particular. This is a sapphic space opera. That's all I know about it so far. It's pretty short. I don't actually know whether this is a first book in a series or a standalone, but regardless, I'm looking forward to it. I am mostly attracted to it because of its cover, and I really want to get into more space operas so I could eliminate the low-budget ones in my mind. And the last book that I physically own that I want to read in the month of March is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rishoni Chokshi. I at first heard, or at least assumed, that this was a fantasy novel, but then I have been hearing the fan base or subscribers say that this isn't even a fantasy novel and it did not belong in the Fairy Loot Adult subscription service, which is very interesting. I am very much curious about this one in particular and what genre it actually falls under, but what I do know is that this book essentially features a toxic female friendship, and I mean, I don't know, it kind it hits home right now. I'm not saying that I'm currently in one. I actually recently left one. So this book might just be triggering for me. It might be very difficult for me to read because I have a feeling I'm going to resonate with the victim in the situation. But I'm also quite excited to try this out because this is Rashani Shakshi's first adult fiction book. I initially was planning to skip my adult fairy loot for the month and I'm kind of glad I didn't because initially I did not like the aesthetics of this book and I was still kind of hesitant after not liking the Gilded Wolves trilogy that much after the first book and not liking A Crown of Wishes as much as everyone else did, so I was very hesitant. However, after I found out about the synopsis of this book, I figured it might just validate my hurt and my pain that I went through um, in the dreadful situation. Fingers crossed I will love this book and find some comfort in it. And the last couple of books I would like to put on my March TBR are actually by Sarah A. Parker, and they belong in her Dark Rapunzel reimagining series, and I believe the title for the first book is To Bleed a Crystal Bloom. I have wanted to read this series for quite some time and I've actually pre-ordered the hardbacks to pick up at Rare. I'm very much looking forward to picking those up because the hardbacks are so stunning. I want to read it before the event because I do plan on meeting Sarah A. Parker if I do have the chance. I mean, I love myself a good dark reimagining and Rapunzel is one I haven't really seen much of. The only Rapunzel reimagining I've read so far is Cress. I'm looking forward to reading another one and I hope I love it just as much as Cress or maybe even more than Cress. I honestly cannot wait to meet Sarah A. Parker at rare and to read the series at some point I plan to listen to it on audio in the month of March so fingers crossed I'll get to it and I will love it. So that is going to be it for this video today book lovers if you happen to stay to the end of the video leave me the blue heart emoji because I'm wearing blue and if you happen to enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers and also I have social medias so Matt G's books on Twitter and Instagram and I'm also Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash and finally I'm at TikTok. Matt G's on TikTok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content. I love you book lovers and I will see you later.